All right, we're here. Tenet recently came out. It's made over $150 million at the box office. Pretty impressive numbers given the yeah. worldwide COVID situation. <laughs> um, so what are your initial thoughts? Oh, disclaimer. We are in non-spoilers right now. Uh, mm. We will definitely let you know and then give you a time to pause before we go into spoilers. Yes. Uh, just as a way to go beforehand. Also, a secondary disclaimer, we both, like, for those who don't know, the tenant is only available in theaters right now. And we all took the necessary precautions to, to watch this. We weren't being, you know, reckless about it, just as a, just to assure anyone's concerns or anything. Yeah, yeah, and to fur further go on that, um, you know, I, I think seeing movies are is an awesome thing to do, but if you're going to do it, make sure it's safe, um, especially where you are before, and make sure you do all the research ahead of time to make sure it's the right decision for you um, to just be safe and stay healthy, because that's what's most important. But, all right, here, let's get into the review of Tenet. So what are your first thoughts on the movie? Well, my, I have to start at the beginning with the fact that Christopher Nolan is just one of my favorite directors, um, period. So I approach any project of his with like a lot of anticipation with a lot of, um, I guess it's just sort of like, like in inner, inner acknowledgement that like, it's probably gonna be like a pretty epic, like um, storytelling. I mean, The Dark Knight and Inception is like one of my two favorite movies, one of the most important movies to me. Uh, so I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Tenet was like on my top three most anticipated of 2020. And fi when I finally got to solve it, um, how, be how best to recap such a movie. <laughs> um, I'll say that once I got through the whole thing, my Christopher Nolan love, I'll admit, did kick in a bit in the sense that like, I was like, okay, I can like excuse certain things. I was like, I can appreciate um, this a little more but uh I'll be honest after once the shock and awe of it wore off I was limited to being a bit underwhelmed by Tenet and um I mean it was I think it was a crazy experience and I wish that um I was in normal circumstance I would be able to go back and like experience it again and again just because I think it is a truly huge like, spectacle movie like Christopher Nolan really meant it when he said you have to watch this on the big screen mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. Uh, once you get through the technical stuff, I feel like the story wavered a bit, and I'll, I'll and I'll, I'll overall admit to being a bit underwhelmed compared to um, his previous work. So um, that's in a nutshell. Before we break, go into start breaking down um, more specific stuff. But um, yeah. what about you? What was your thoughts? Yeah. So I was able to see it in theaters, um, in an empty theater. For that matter, I was the only person there. Right. That's that's great. <laughs> um, I, I I was able to scout it out ahead of time, and I was like, oh, there's no one, literally no one here. Uh, awesome. So that was a plus, and I was able to see it in theaters. And I have to agree with you; I was somewhat underwhelmed, mm -hmm. and I had that same thing of trying to justify it. Um, and I think the visuals are amazing. I think everything that has to do with um in camera effects and just kind of the process of filmmaking mm -hmm. i think it's a masterpiece in that sense and i think it's really an experience in the movies that a lot of people would have loved mm -hmm. but i think where it struggles is in the story in the execution of the story um, and we can get a little bit further into this now because i'm kind of i don't want to echo what you've been saying too much mm -hmm. um i feel like the story is kind of missing a heart it feels yeah, very much like a james bond movie but it feels a little bit more cold and um impersonal yes that's exactly the word i was i was i was using in my head when i was thinking about it it's just it's just cold it's just a very like i don't know yeah it's it's like uh it's like a james bond movie but at least uh even like daniel craig's more like gritty ones had a sense of like style and wit to it um but here just felt like very empty and hollow yeah and i was just confusing for me just because like 
like it, this is the second movie he's made in a row where it's a like a cold film like Dunkirk necessarily didn't have any like emotional attachments in the way that like Matthew McConaughey and, and uh, his, his daughter in Interstellar or even like something like Bruce Wayne and Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy but um I feel like but like with Dunkirk I feel like that was it worked like the lack yeah. of like emotional attachment but here it just it just really stood out and it just really made it feel like empty yeah yeah that's that's um kind of how i would compare it because in dunkirk it's very much on purpose um mm-hmm. it's meant to show kind of the coldness of war and kind of the i mean the people who survived are oftentimes just lucky right. um you're in the right spot in the right time um you know but here it seems like it's not purposeful uh there, there is definitely attempt at the heart of the story uh, mm-hmm. with Elizabeth Debicki's character and yeah. uh, Kenneth Branagh. Mm-hmm. And I, I first want to say the performance from Kenneth Branagh and um, Robert Pattinson are standouts in this film. 100%. Um, Kenneth Branagh eats up every bit of dialogue. He, he's just, it's so fantastic in the he film. Goes, he goes all out. Yeah. And then um... Robert Pattinson is just charming as hell. Like, I mean, he's <laughs> first big return to a blockbuster in um, several years, and he's, he's charming in hell as in his sporting role. And he brings an energy, and he brings somewhat of a comedic element to the film, mm-hmm. which I felt it needed more of. It felt like the film was almost taking itself too seriously at times. Yeah. Uh, and while it's a completely different film than Inception, uh, it's the same sort of structure where you have this plot mechanism, um, which Tenet is time inversion. Mm-hmm. And in Inception is the kind of layered dream within a dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the name Inception. But in Inception, there's a heart to the story and that's what drives the plot. Whereas in here, the plot is being driven by these stakes um, of you know the destruction of the world yeah uh but we don't feel those stakes i don't think and, like and we do in inception yeah and it's also just because like i think like with inception again the the concept of inception was so core to the story like it was a heist movie and it's a heist taking place in the mind but here tenet it's a spy movie but it feels like inversion is like a, it felt like a gimmick that was like like ta- it's like uh, I, I picture. Um, I don't know if you've seen like the the pitch meet meeting videos on the Screen Rant YouTube mm-hmm. channel, but um, I picture the tenant one is like Christopher Nolan wants to make a James Bond movie, but he's like I have to put my Christopher Nolan spin, so I have to come up with almost like I have to bend over backwards to come up with some physics defying thing, and just like stuck it there. Right. Like I. Like none. Like it gains a little more prevalence in like entering the third it's like back half of the second act and the third act but like the first half like it just felt like a gimmick for no reason i i it's already such a confusing concept to understand right i didn't feel purposeful just exasperated the issue it feels a little long it feels slow at times in the first half and i will give credit where credit's due the third act is pretty is pretty spectacular um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's the vi- it's just like a, and it's it's a beautiful action scene that is a masterpiece of kind of filmmaking and understanding how to make an action scene where yeah. I don't think it's much of a spoiler. If so, we can bleep it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but people are going um, inverted and non inverted at the same time. Yeah. And you see that a little bit earlier and it's just, I'm, I'm just, my jaws dropped in how is they did that all on camera. It's not like they're reversing footage yeah. of one person and not the other. Mm. The actors had to actually learn how to fight um, backwards in backwards a way. <laughs> and they had to learn how to talk backwards for parts of this. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Now I was, yeah. no, was going to add on to the, your thing about the third act. Like, that's the war movie Nolan, like people are expecting from like Dunkirk. Like this was like, that third act was Nolan's war movie. And I was like, this is spectacular. Like, um, yeah, like the whole, like, I'll admit, 
I didn't understand necessarily what was happening, like in terms of like actual like like what was like going on. It took me a bit to wrap my head around it, but the way it unfolds, it's um, like we said in the beginning, like that's big screen IMAX, like that is IMAX material right there. It was incredible to watch. Yeah, and I think the way kind of kind of Brana plays out as a villain and kind mm-hmm. of that twist that comes there, the mm-hmm. twist doesn't hit, but and in doing so, it doesn't raise the stakes oh, yeah. because you don't feel for this character and the world kind of feels cold mm-hmm. um, and I think David John David Washington gives a really good performance uh, for what he's given he's fantastic in action sequences and if you've yeah. seen him in Black Klansman you know he's an amazing actor mm-hmm. I just think the character itself um, named protagonist is cold um, yeah, like, I thought when, when I realized, like, oh, is that that's what his character is called, I thought, one, like, this could work. We've had, like, nameless, I mean, like, literally Clint Eastwood's character from Sergio Leone's Westerns, the man with no name. So I was like, this could work, but it felt like there was just no, you're just like a machine. Like, it was, it, was, it was just a machine, like, going through, like, doing what, doing his mission. I didn't feel, I didn't, I, I didn't know who this guy was. I didn't know, like, what he stood for, why he particularly, like, cared other than it was his job it just felt like it's the hollow and i think not not giving him a name didn't like help also i i didn't i've been thinking about it i didn't realize how in a way kind of uh, ridiculous it was they kept slipping the word protagonist into like oh like you think i'm the protagonist of of this of the story or something like mm-hmm. do, you, do you know what i'm talking about yes yeah i thought that was kind of silly if i'm being honest just because like I don't know. I just thought like maybe knowing in my head, like that's what they call them in the promotional materials and then them like slipping it into the, into conversations. I thought that was kind of, I thought that was kind of silly in a way. Yeah. I could roll with it, but I don't know. Yeah. It, interesting writing. <laughs> it, it, like it's fine, but it, at times it throws you out of the movie. Yeah. Uh, which I don't think you want to happen. Uh, right. The last thing character wise I want to talk about is Elizabeth Debecky's character. Um, who's the wife of Kenneth Branagh's character. Uh, what were your thoughts on her as a character? Because I didn't really think that highly of how, I think the acting was good. I think that's the thing. Every actor in this role does the best with they what can. they're given. Yeah, exactly. Um, but what were your thoughts? On her specifically, I think there was something there. I think there was something Nolan was trying to hit for with the whole like, um, with how the two like, Chrono and the bookies characters are like the way the storyline the, the the circumstances are placed into i think there was an interesting like thing they were going for i just feel like nolan conceived the idea and then just didn't did, just did not go any like either he refused to go deeper or did he ran out of time in the pre-production to go any deeper with it just because um i don't know would going going any deep getting any more detail would that be spoiling or yes okay i'll keep it yeah. your brother then yeah, like yeah. i think there was something there i think i think there could have been a very generally interesting thing there but they he did it in such a like broad strokes mm-hmm. and it was kind of like i always felt he it felt like he um he was like here's a woman here's this um particular plot device mm-hmm. there's your there's your heart and emotion of the story and it's like that's not exactly <laughs> Yeah, you can't just put things there and expect like you gotta you gotta dive, and it sucks that I'm I'm, I'm like talking negatively because again I love Christopher Nolan but I don't know it's yeah. just the way it was that I didn't it didn't resonate fully with me and then from what with you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's still a movie I would recommend watching, mm-hmm. um, and I think we're more critical of Nolan. Uh, it's like a sports player like we're more critical of LeBron James because we hold him to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. Um, because they're the best at what they do Mm -hmm. Um, for a lot of other people this would be like you'd be like wow they can make this movie that's pretty amazing yeah Um, just on scale and that sort of stuff but on Nolan it's almost a higher bar yeah um, which I don't think he quite meets the last two things I want to talk about is the score and the sound mixing (laughs) Um, and they kind of tie together yes so it's a Nolan thing that he puts a score really loud and sometimes you can't hear dialogue. Mm-hmm. And watching this movie, it was really frustrating 
because they're giving exposition, right? That's kind of important. Yeah. And you're really struggling to hear what they're saying. Right. And I know, um, oh, I had to be careful not to trip myself up and say spoiler, but I understand why he does it because it just keeps you in the movie. And I think it's, he uses a score as pacing. Mm -hmm. um, and Ludwig um, Gorhansen. I believe so. I believe uh, who um, also did the score for The Mandalorian, Black, Black Panther. Um, I believe he's done all of Ryan Coogler's movies. So that'd also be Fruitvale Station and Creed and a few other films. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great score. I think it's sometimes just not mixed right because I can't hear what people are saying. And it's the same thing with, uh, it's on the beginning when they're in the boat, mm -hmm. the waves of the water are so loud that I can't hear what John David Washington is saying. Yeah. I, and again, like we'll be going a little deeper in, into it in our spoiler section, but like this is probably Nolan's most complicated, like, thing in inversion compared to like uh interstellar was like black holes or whatnot and like you like i felt like i like you desperately like need to know how this thing works and how like because this is a very large cast and a large game of this person knows this person and this person right. this. so you need all that information like just in the first act to get to understand what happens after and yeah it's like sometimes like you know it doesn't help that like most of the dialogue is like well, not whisper, I guess just spoken normally. And like, so, and then you have like this, this booming, like like loud bass, like score, just like banging in your ears. Um, I don't know, like reading through a couple of views, because like everyone's mentioned this, is that the sound mixing in this film is like, is not the best. Mm -hmm. And people count, look towards other Nolan films and they're like, it's kind of a repeated pattern. Made me kind of reevaluate as well, because I'm like, I guess this is a thing. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like the sound mixing definitely could have been better. And um, mm -hmm. I like what you did say though, about how it was like useless pacing. Cause I do think it definitely like, it definitely would like help like set, set the mood and like help like impart like the emotions like that are going on, which is uh, as the function of any score. But um I don't know. I just kind of, you, you gotta you gotta put, turn on subtitles or something. Mm -hmm. Some of these yeah. words. Yeah, I. So to wrap up, we're gonna go to spoilers after this. Um, the last thing I, I think we both agree that it's a movie you should go see if it's safe for you to see. Yeah. Um, and it does warrant rewatching the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think definitely it, it's like Inception. Uh, it's the it's a puzzle. And each time you watch it, you're going to figure it out more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this is a lot more complicated than Inception was. Um, but it's that same sort of theme. And I think that adds an element of uh, fun to it. And I think mm -hmm. as a movie fan, <clears throat> it's really fun to be able to have those conversations. Well, does this mean this or does this mean that? Uh, so overall, I give it a like... 3.75 out of five is kind of like oh, we're going with we're going to the five star metric okay <laughs> yeah yeah i you know you know what scratch the stars it's it's a i'm giving it like a b that, okay. that's kind of my range for it um i think a 3.75 is maybe a little low okay i yeah i probably have to say the same it's just it's an incredibly well shot movie the score on its own is good the acting like is is great for you know what they're given and at least again to refer to the third act like that was like crazy action filmmaking like like craziest i've seen all year it's um but it's just the story just like drags it down raise it down so i think i guess i would say b um i'll keep it there not say b plus b minus because i hope to rewatch it in the future get a better handle on it yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it. <laughs> All right, now we're going to move on to our spoiler part of the review. Now, if you did not pay attention the first time I said it, these are spoilers for the movie Tenet. 
if you have not seen the movie, please leave and come back. We do not want to spoil this for you. It's part of the intrigue. It's what makes this movie very watchable is kind of how things unfold. In the meantime, if you could uh, like and subscribe, then come back and then we watch and watch the rest of it. Yeah, definitely the way to go. Um, so where do you want to start as far as spoilers go? Uh, do you want to start with just going um, inverse as far as the movie and starting with the third act? You know, why, why the hell not? We'll, we'll, we'll play, we'll do it your way, Christopher Nolan. We'll start from <laughs> the back, we'll start from the back. Um, so let's start with Robert Pattinson's character because this is a very interesting thing that's revealed at the very end of the story when he says, um, this is only the beginning of your story talking to John David Washington um, called the protagonist, but this is the end of mine. Mm -hmm. um, what were your thoughts on kind of what happened in that moment and what he necessarily meant? I saw it as a um, this sort of paradoxical loop and uh not to spoil these other properties, but you see it in the in the Flash TV show. You see it in the, term, the very first Terminator movie. This sort of like future builds the past, which in turn builds the, the future. Um, I saw it as um, like, at, like at some point in the future, Robert, John David Washington finds Robert Pattinson uns, unsuspecting, unaware of what's happening. He recruits him. They go on um, um, many adventures and um, uh, together and then at a certain point John David is like now you have to recruit me to ensure that like we set up the, the whole tenant organization that we're there to like I guess maintain the timeline or whatever and so Rob Hansen finds his way to John David Washington um that's how I uh thought of it how did you, you know did you take it a different way or no, I thought of it the same way. That's what I came out of it. And I think the moment that you realize that this is a loop mm -hmm. is, or at least that I realized it was a loop, was, was it when they initially have, was it at, right after the car sequence? Does that come first? Or is it when they're going back from when they, they crashed the plane? Um, I guess from the moment they crashed the plane. Oh, well, Robert Pattinson did introduce himself to um, John David a little earlier, but then, then the plane sequence, I believe, came. No. Right. But what I mean is uh, the second time. Oh, okay. When now they're going in uh, reverse. Yeah. They're, they're inverted now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the moment when everything clicked to me, because when he's first yeah. inversed, I didn't realize it was a loop. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is a little weird. I don't quite understand this. Mm -hmm. um, but when he goes into the plane and they're crashing it again and they're yeah. going into the wreckage as, you know, the like plane's secure. going backwards. Yeah. I was like, all right, where is this going? And this is spoilers. This is super spoilers. If I didn't spoil, say it was spoilers yeah. before. Um, and John David Washington is pulled and he fights John David Washington. Yes. And it's at that moment that you're like, oh wait what oh, he's yeah it's it's a loop that's when it finally clicked for me right i'm so, like oh the past is the future in the the future is now the past and it's just that so, circular yeah. paradox so for you that for the for you this key piece of information did it like work for you as like a final like reveal or whatnot? it worked for me as a reveal okay. um i was like oh that's kind of that's really cool like i like that Okay. But then I was like, it doesn't quite hit. It's, it fades very quickly. Okay. That's probably what happened to me then. Because like at first I was like, this is very like an interesting stuff. But then again, as I was like thinking about it days later, like maybe I need to rewatch it. Pro I'm probably, probably will at some point. But I just felt like it was never a big like point of contention that like, oh, like I don't know, John David Washington is like, creator is like more involved with this than he like actually appears to be like mm -hmm. when they were like actually you're gonna form this organization and you're gonna do all this stuff I was kind of like this is a bit of last minute information revealed I mean maybe I just need to be watching like with all the clues laid out with laid out for me now um I don't know I thought it was an interesting thing I just also felt that like it was just introduced it wasn't that it could have been hinted at more to set up like the whole like 
like oh shoot <laughs> like right this is we're, we're watching like i'm only as like this isn't the first time the cycle has come around in a way mm -hmm. and the other thing that was interesting was you know when robert pattinson says he killed the other masked guy and it yeah. turns out both the masked guy were john david washington going in inverse mm -hmm. um and when we saw that before we found out it was a loop the second time around I was like, oh, that's weird. It did not look like he killed that guy at all. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then it comes full circle. And I think that really helps. So you come to that realization. Yes. That, oh, something else is going on here. Yeah, They're in a loop yeah. and yeah, Pattinson weird. knows. Mm -hmm. um, but and, yeah, you, you, keep, you can keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just actually... Do you have anything to say about that specifically, or do you want to move on a little bit? I was, I was just going to say on. that second fight was when my mouth like dropped because I was like mm -hmm. just seeing, just like I remember the moment like, like by that point I was like, oh, is he fighting himself? But just to see like John David Washington like get sucked into the door, and then suddenly he's like back with a uh, John David Washington in the suit, and like he's in the riot armor or whatever, and they're like right. going back, and my mouth did drop because I was like. This is like the craziest thing. I was like, this is the pitch we told Nolan must have like made or whatever. Cause I was like, this is like crazy. And I remember thinking like, this is the second hallway fight. Like this is the sequel to the, to the uh, inception fight. Like it was just so cool. And again, John David and the stunt man like had to do it all practically. So they were actually like bending over backward and doing all the things again. I was like, this is a, this is a cool, this is a cool fight sequence. And what makes it so yeah. special is that they aren't really short cuts. Yeah. It's not like Taken where they have like 18 cuts in two seconds. Like the Bourne series. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they really use long takes, given long takes are like seven or eight seconds. But mm -hmm. when you're moving in reverse, seven or eight seconds moving in the wrong direction fighting is yeah. insane. Like, I I don't know how they did that. Yeah. It's just an achievement on actors. Shout out to John David Washington and the uh, stunt, stunt person who yeah. plays his double. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how many months of training went into doing that. Yeah. And like whoever choreographed, like, like can you imagine Christopher Nolan telling the, his choreographers, like one guy's in reverse and one guy's going forward, but it's still like a normal, like it looks like a fist fight still. And you're kind of like, the f uh, it's just a crazy epic act. that's probably my favorite action moment of this year this so far that was so cool to watch yeah it's though my we even though we technically saw the fight like already just seeing it from like the other perspective with all the knowledge it was mm -hmm. a shocking moment great moment yeah i think it's my second favorite um action sequence of this year that i can remember at least um, first being it's in the Invisible Man. It's the hallway sequence without spoiling that movie. Yeah, that's fair. That's actually fair. I, I, I'm not. I'm not against that. Uh, but anyways, moving on to Robert Pattinson. So he is both dead and alive at the same exact time. Um, I was confused because it doesn't show how he dies, right? Yeah. But it's very clear because they do the close up on his backpack as yeah, he's walking away. Spring. Right. And they do the close-up on his backpack when John David Washington stuck on the other side of that um, mm -hmm. fencing or, like, fence Wait, door. So can you explain how you interpreted that, like, like in, like, listing the series of events, like, this happened first, and this, how did you interpret it? Because I'll be honest with you, I did, I, in a way, I still don't get it. But by also at that point in the movie, there was, like, five minutes left, so I was like, I'm just going to push through it. I just went with it. Um, okay. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, because I could tell that he Pattinson knew what was going on, mm -hmm. uh, but I still don't understand how that happened. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that doesn't make sense to me is Pattinson says that if you are next to yourself and your particles get too close and one of you is going in the inverse and one's not, or yeah. actually, I don't think Pattinson says that. I think the um exposition character number two uh <laughs> yeah. when john david washington's the, first inverse what the fe wait, the female oh, soldier yeah. Is, okay yeah um they're like if you get too close to your uh 
yourself not yeah. going in the inverse, you'll get annihilated. Mm -hmm. Like your particles will just like rip apart. Yeah. And then you see John David Washington Fighting. fight John David Washington. And they're fine. Yeah, like... I don't... I, it thing. makes no sense to me. I had... Like, that's the thing with time manipulation movies. Like, this... Like, I can't even call this one a time travel movie. Like, it's mm -hmm. a time manipulation movie. Like, is, there's always contradictions. There's always something. Like, the only two movies I can think of that were solid, relatively solid in their time travel logic is Back to the Future and The Terminator. Anything after that, or at least maybe it's something I haven't seen. Everything after that, there's always, like contradictions holds to be right involved. right and it stinks because like it's a it's a it's a small thing it's a small throwaway line of dialogue but it's very important right. and so my kind of thought is am i wrong in the interpretation and is that supposed to be on purpose um or is it just a thing where christopher nolan's like eh, it's so much more cooler that they're fighting he's fighting himself and that matters more as kind of an experience than it does caring about that little minute detail that's what i'm yeah. kind of curious about i i refer to what's to something my english teacher once said we were watching the karate kid and i was like i was like mr adams like i'm pretty sure johnny lawrence already got his three points against daniel larusso the amount of times he hit him and he's like sometimes writers like like they realize they've hit a logic like roadblock, but they're like, we just have to push through. We're gonna like just smooth over, roll with it, and like um, just keep going with it. And I feel like that that's probably it. Like even though there were contradictions and gaps, like the screenwriters just like just push to their intended ending despite the many of logical like holes. Right. Um, Elizabeth Debicki's character in relation to Kenneth Branagh. I think that's the weakest part of the film. Mm -hmm. That's that's fair. Well, to refer to what I said in the spoiler-free section, like, I think there was something there, especially since, like, they, in, like, Branagh was a, like, an abusive husband. Like, he was, like, he was, like, holding their son, like, like not hostage, but, like, he was keeping him from her. Right. I think that could have been, like, especially seeing as how she's the one that kills him, I think there was something genuinely interesting there to that they, that nolan could have i don't know how he could have worked it in like thematically or like you know amongst the 10 million other things that was like going around but i think there's like i think there's like a interesting thing he could have done there i can't particularly say what but i don't know i just wish he had developed that particular point a little more because i do think yeah like their scenes together it feels like the the pacing just slows down yeah I agree. And I think it's just her character isn't well written. She seems like a, she's constantly saying, oh no, my son. Mm -hmm. Right. But we never feel her pain that she can't be with her son. Mm -hmm. I think it felt like we almost needed a moment or a scene of her just by herself mm -hmm. um, struggling with that in some sort of way. Yeah. I felt like that would have been very helpful in kind of giving an idea of why other than it feeling like she's talking about her son. But we, we as an audience have nothing to feel for her because we don't see anything with her son other than her like dropping him off on school and saying right. goodbye to him in the car, which are very right. impersonal things. Yeah. And it kind of plays on this theme of the movie feels very impersonal. And like, I just didn't like how they positioned her as like the emotional connection for like John David right again like we said i said like, like we don't know anything about john david's character so for him for his sole emotional like thorough line to be elizabeth the bicky's character who we already said is like not the most like in-depth like emotional person i don't know i just thought that was like one side either john david or elizabeth the bicky they had to give either character something on their own so if you were going to be like okay now we're going to attach this person to you like it wouldn't have felt like because it just felt i don't know it just felt out of nowhere for just for john david to be so like committed to her and like or whatnot so i don't know i i i agree that it's just again cold like five characters that um uh, didn't take off yeah um is there anything 
else you want to cover before we talk about the beginning since we're going in inverse like the very very yeah. beginning um the whole war sequence not not necessarily a war but like that was like i can only imagine like being on set that day that must have been an incredible filming day to watch unfold when they blew up that building in, <laughs> in they blew up the top like yeah. the bottoms coming apart and the tops coming together and then yeah. the other one the Mm -hmm. bottoms coming together and the tops yes. going apart i was just like that is a crazy visual yeah and that was like they didn't cut they just held the camera there they reversed it blew it up did it again i was like I, my mouth dropped again i was like holy cow like <laughs> like I, I i was utterly like blown away and um i don't know it's just like great setting like the abandoned town or whatever you just had even things like the like the colored armbands, like so you could sort of keep track of who was what, where was what, and um, and while I admit I didn't under fully understand, like I mean I understood Brana's plan, but I also didn't understand like what he was doing. I still they still were like able to like communicate stakes and communicate like there's a ticking clock, like all the basic stuff of an intense action scene. So oh, um, that bothered me though the clock because they were literally looking at their watch. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I feel like the tension's not there. Like mm -hmm. every time you look at the clock, it should be like, oh shoot, they have two minutes less to do it. It doesn't look yeah. like they're going to do it. Oh no, they only have a minute left. Oh, they're so screwed, right? Yeah. And it, it just doesn't, you don't feel that. Mm -hmm. And it feels yeah. like while the action and kind of the scale all comes together in the third act, I think my understanding, and this could be a me personally thing, falls apart in the third act because i'm not cl like clear ex on exactly what they're trying to stop are they trying to stop the whole sequence from coming together mm -hmm. and i don't understand how they are stop how they stop that essentially yeah. there's that whole scene where they're like the classic like operation planning scene they got their board set up everyone's you know sitting like they're presenting everything and like i think it's aaron taylor johnson's character at one point he's like mm -hmm an attempt at temporal pincer movement and by the end of the movie i was like i don't know what the hell you people just pulled off i don't know what like was going on but i mean sure i guess yeah when they're showing that i felt like it was me in like 12th grade uh, <laughs> math class yeah and i had no idea what the teacher's talking about yeah and like i i got the whole idea of like having people like i once i was like oh they're sending one in like going forward sending one in reverse i was still like how does that accomplish anything <laughs> like like i don't know it's like so you have people like working backwards and i guess to have like arrive at one singular point of victory but i'm like i mean you guys blew up that building that was pretty cool <laughs> but besides that i was like i'm the i was I know, the logistics of the plan looked cool but i still it was still confusing for me I gotta say yeah it's something that definitely when it comes out on um on demand or blu-ray or whatever mm -hmm. um probably it'll go to hbo max yeah probably uh it's something i'll definitely check out and try to figure it out but for now um I, I picture, no sorry i didn't mean to cut you no go ahead go ahead i was just like i can picture myself like writing like a like how to tenant like like just like an explanation of the book and just like selling it to viewers just like okay just if you need anything pause look for it in your little dictionary like it explains everything yeah, like the like a tenant textbook. Yeah, basically. That explains all the rules and the science behind it. Yeah. Um to end, let's go in inverse and start with the beginning. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about the very opening like the first opening scene? So the opera house like like fight or whatever? Yes. I actually thought that was like as an opening action sequence, I thought that was pretty cool. I remember at one point there's that shot, like running shot of like John David's running and then he slides under a thing and I was like, that's pretty smooth. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty smooth, man. I thought it was a, and then you have, um, again, the score like booming and wasn't as big of a problem, at least because there's like a few spoken lines. I was okay with the that as a whole sequence. I will say that when they transitioned to like John David being captured, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, I know you're captured, but I also don't know like, why, like what was the point? of that so again right. so again kind of the similar things you've been saying about the movie spectacle action was great story i wasn't entirely sure like what, what was going on mm -hmm. 
I would agree. So uh, those are our thoughts on Tenet. Uh, thank you guys for watching so much. Yeah, we you. really appreciate it. And uh, we'd really love it. And you, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. Yeah, don't be um, scared. Fear is the mind killer. Exactly. To quote Timothy Chalamet playing Paul Atreides in Dune. All right. We'll see you guys next time.